All right, back at it, guys. How's it going? I'm Leo, and in this video today, we are going to be looking at Activision. We're going to go do an in-depth analysis and see what we should be paying for the company. We're going to look at the metrics, the financial evaluations of the company, seeing where it currently stands and where it's predicted to go. And then finally, we will take a look at a price to pay for this company and if it's in our wheelhouse and if it's worth having in our portfolio. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Activision Blizzard has been making headlines because it just recently uh, has been part of a deal uh, being acquired by Microsoft for about 70, I think $70 billion. So without further ado, uh, let's jump into it. $61 billion company. Uh, price came down a couple of days. In the last couple of days, at $78 before I think it was, it got up to almost, I think, $90. It went like rose like 30%. All right, company metrics category. We got PE ratio, price to earnings, uh, trailing 12 months at 23. We want this to be beneath 20, and it is not. And the average five year PE ratio is 62. So it has dropped. That's good to see. That's really good. Um, but we're not under that 20 uh, PE ratio mark. So not too, not looking too good. Let's go to EPS. We are at 3.41 uh, for the trailing 12 months compared to 1.77 as our average. It's pretty good. Um, and any kind of improvement uh, over at least the five year average is always a positive for me. Uh, return on equity trailing 12 months, 16% compared to the average of 11. Uh, percent we want this to be over 15 and in our 12 months it is and it's beating out our five-year average which is awesome profit margin is 29.19 percent revenue nine billion dollars and our net income is 2.6 billion dollars with our free cash flow being at 2.8 right um they do pay out a small dividend at 0.60%. Uh, and of those dividends paid, that is $316 million. We want to see if this company can cover their dividends paid by looking at the cash flow. On average, the cash flow is at $1.93 billion. And uh, so, that's easy. so they can easily pay out that dividend. And uh, yeah, so... Average cash flow is almost okay. Pretty big improvement. All right, return on invested capital almost fifteen percent here at fourteen point nine one. Five year average is at eleven point fifteen. We want this number to be over ten percent or ten percent or higher, and uh, they and they're crushing that uh, in that regard for the five year and for the trailing twelve months. They essentially what the return on invested capital is is how well or how much of a return they get on their money invested, and they do a good job of uh, getting a decent return. Altman Z score seven point one nine. We want this number to be over three, and this is a metric to, to determine the risk of bankruptcy, the risk of bankruptcy for a company. Uh, and but between the numbers of one point eight and three is in this kind of gray zone where. It's kind of un they're unsure beneath 1.8. You're in a red zone and the company is uh, at a risk of becoming bankrupt and three. It means you're in a safe zone. Activision is in a really good spot. They're at seven. Piotrowski score. Now this is uh, a score ranging from one to nine. Uh, we want companies within the eight to nine range. And essentially what this does is it compares different metrics um, from like the current year to the year prior, like utilizing, let's say, previous assets and liabilities and seeing uh, if, if there has been improvement over the course of from a year to year basis. Now, you get a point if one if if that one of those categories is true. So for each of the nine categories, if it's true, then you get a point. Anyways, our score here is at six. We want this to be between eight and nine, so it's kind of on the mess score. Um, I gotta figure figure out a way what, where they failed, but uh, for the time being, six is where we're showing, and um, yeah. 
So, so far, uh, decent Activision Blizzard. I'm not too thrilled about the PE being over 20, but uh, it, it could work out. Uh, the average PE, a little bit high, don't like that. Uh, return on equity, uh, I'm decent with that, and the uh, free cash flow is 1.93 billion okay return on, on uh what the company has going for it right now is, is the definitely the return on invested capital and uh they can easily pay a dividend so all right i kind of feel like middle middle of the road so far let's move on to evaluations we have scored a seven out of ten on our scorecard so let's go through that quickly right now uh average Five-year PE is at 62.12. Uh, that it gets a zero because we want this to be under 20. So it's going to score no points over there. Current ratio is at 5.56. As, as long as I want to see this number to be over 1.5, being as high as it is has me a little bit concerned because you have all these assets and... I don't know if it's being used efficiently. So, like, I kind of get a little bit skeptical when it's over, when the current ratio is over three. When it's over three, I, I kind of question the company is in the, in the sense of they have these assets on hand, but are they not using them to their full advantage? So, I'm not complaining. They can cover the liabilities, but something to be concerned about. Turn on equity is uh, 11.6% uh that's on average we want this to be over 15 um the current is the current 12 months is over 15 um so i mean i I might end up just switching that out for the current 12 months but on average it's it's, it's gonna get a zero because i i want to see just consistent over five, over 15. uh earnings per share growth 185 percent growth uh, we went from, well, we see it here, from 1.77, now up to 3.41. And, uh, I mean, actually, I don't know if that's the, um, all right. All right, now on to earnings per share growth. We're at 185%. Um, so that gets a one. That gets a little uh, mark there. They get a point for that. Debt to equity, 23.97%. That's phenomenal. We want this number to be under 50%. And uh, what the debt to equity is, is how the company is using financial leverage. We want the company to use financial leverage uh, through means of equity and not taking on debt. Uh, and this ratio uh, shows how much of it is actually debt and how much of it is equity. So our debt levels is only 23.97%. So that is a point right there. I like that number a lot. Now, share dilution. This is a very, it's an important one. Um, this is how much the company is diluting you in shares. So we want Activision Blizzard to be buying back shares. We want them to be buying back shares so uh, you own more of the company. The company now is has been issuing shares over the last five years. It's showing 0.52%, so not a whole lot of shares. It's still an increase nonetheless, but it's not an increase that I'm, I'm going to be like predominantly worried about. But essentially, it's it's this. You got 10 shares. There's 10 shares in a company. You know, uh, you own one of them, so that means you own 10% of the business. Now, the company buys back uh, two of those shares. Now there's only eight shares on the market. That means you own 12.5%. Stealing that one from uh, Everything Money because they're awesome. And uh, I think that's the easiest way to explain that. Sharing is not caring. Okay. We want to have a majority of the company's shares as much as we can. As much as we can stretch our dollar to own a majority of the company, that's what we want. And Activision Blizzard is slightly diluting you, but not too crazy. All right, five-year net income growth. Now, this is a 127% increase, so it gets a point. Awesome. Five-year free cash flow growth, 7.68%. Okay, it's growing. Uh, so we'll get a point there. 
Five year return on invested capital average, 11.15% as we discussed prior. So that gets a point there. And then five year revenue growth is uh, 13%. So that also gets a point. So all in all, seven out of 10, decent. Um, let's look at the chart here. This is one year. Yeah. It's kind of just been moving sideways. It, it dipped down towards the, in the 60s, almost like, I think even high 50s range, something like that. After, because there was some uh, sexual allegation charges uh, against the CEO, something something like that. I don't know the full story, but uh, it, it this this little peak right there that's the you know oh microsoft's gonna be buying activision and uh, it shot right up now you know activision is a very popular company they make some of the most uh, i guess well-known video games um or of not all time but they do make some titles that you their household names like world of warcraft call of duty i'm pretty sure they make candy crush too They've been around in the gaming industry for quite some time, so um, they are they are a titan in there. I mean, I don't know how well Call of Duty is doing right now, but I definitely put my hours um, into the game way back when, when it was uh, World World War. No, it was uh, Modern Warfare and uh, the original Black Ops. So that was that was definitely a fun time. Anyways. Jumping into a, an evaluation price analysis of this company. Let's see what we can figure out what this company is going to be worth. Historic numbers we got was 7%, 13%, and 24%. i am going to go conservative. I'm going to put myself at... I'm going to put myself at 5 point... No. I'll do 6. I'll do 7. I'll do 8. Profit margin, let's do, okay, so we got 19, and then we have a dip at five year number, and back up for one year. I see, I think like this one year, these one year numbers, I think, I wanna say they're an anomaly. Just because, I know with COVID, a lot of people were staying at home, and I know for a fact, a lot of people were playing Call of Duty. Call of Duty Warzone came out at like peak time, like I think end of 2019, so early 2020, people just jumped on board. And plus, like, uh, there's Cold War that came out, Call of Duty Cold War, and Vanguard, I think, is the newest one. So, you know, people were putting in hours, especially during uh, the initial outbreak. Anyways, uh, let's see what our numbers are going to be here 18, 19. I'm going to do, I'll do 18, I'll do 18.5. And then I'll do 19 as a high side. Um, yeah, I'm I'm trying to make our conservative column here. Uh, let's you know, let's I'm trying to make the conservative the conservative column as as most as realistic as possible. So like what something that could be done. So that's why I typically like to stay at least hovering around the 10 year mark or or lower like, or a percent or two lower, just because. Hmm. I, I feel like I need those numbers to hit for it to be a total total buy. All right. Price to free cash flow number. Let's we got at 21. Hmm. It's not you know what? That's not bad. I'm going to go 14, 16, 18. Those are my popular numbers and then I'm going to do 12, 12. Hmm. Yeah, let's see what twelve looks like. Let's see what twelve. Let's see what's PE of twelve, and then we'll go fourteen, and then let's just do eighteen on the high side. Let's just see, and then desired return. We'll do thirteen percent. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right, guys, right across the board. Red across the board. This is overvalued for what it is. And I, I kind of did a calculation, I think, a couple of months ago. I, I'm, I needed it to be in the 
in the 50, mid 50s range, but yeah. So you know what? This makes this makes sense. Cuz where it is right now at 23, it needs to fall in half. The company needs to fall in half from 78 to hit this to hit this number here. Um currently at 78 53 is our average here yeah the company is just is just overpriced for what it was and when those when they, see with that little dip down here when that happened so december 2nd we had it at 57.29 oh boy yeah so hit that 57 mark that would have put us somewhere in here and given the the current numerics this is off obviously off of a 10-year evaluation now i wonder if i increase this pe ratio so let's say if i do well we already know what like, let's do 14 16 that's if i do 20 out of curiosity yeah still still overpriced like what do we have to do to make it hit okay so hit the price of free cash flow if we put it at 20 that's when it hits so where it stands now my thoughts on activision blizzard um i think the just unjustified price increase at the 78 dollar range is just i'm not feeling it just because that was just all hype news because of microsoft and i mean i gotta do more research i think it's going through this that that acquisition i, I don't see why it wouldn't wouldn't but for the time being uh i'm gonna avoid Activision, unless it gets down into the uh, yeah, just low 50s range, mid 50s, gonna stand by that. Um, but yeah, that's my thought. That's my thought on uh, Activision Blizzard. If you found this video helpful, please drop a like, smash the subscribe button, it helps the channel out a lot. And uh, please leave a comment down below of any companies that you want me to see, if, that you want to see be evaluated. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.